In Space Watch, we're getting a look at a new spacecraft that hopes to one day send people to the moon and maybe even Mars. The SpaceX Starship was unveiled this weekend at the company's launch facility in Texas. CEO Elon Musk was there to show off the design and answer questions about how this spacecraft works and how soon we may see tests. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood was also there and joins me now from our Kennedy Space Center Bureau in Florida. Bill, thanks so much for being with us. So we know this is supposed to be a reusable rocket, but explain for us exactly how Musk intends it to work. You know, it's a really interesting design. First of all, as you can see in the imagery, it's very shiny. It's actually made out of stainless steel. Uh, that is an unusual material for a rocket ship. It's heavier than the composite materials traditionally used, but Musk says it's got lots more performance, it's cheaper, and it's gonna make this rocket work uh, as intended. Uh, it's a gigantic rocket. This thing will tower nearly 400 feet tall when it's fully assembled on top of a big booster they're calling the Super Heavy first stage. Uh, 37 engines possibly powering that stage, six in the rocket they showed us over the weekend, the upper stage. Uh, it's fully reusable. The first stage will come back to Earth with a landing. So will the upper stage eventually, which could also, as you said, uh, fly to the moon, eventually even Mars, and then blast off and come back. Uh, that's the idea. Turning that into reality, of course, is going to be a major technical challenge. And I think we're all going to be on the edges of our seats waiting to see how they pull this off. So, uh, Bill, I'm clearly not a scientist, but what kind of combustion would be necessary to send something that large and that heavy into orbit? Well, you know, it really gets down into the intricacies of rocket engines. The, the one they're using for this vehicle is called the Raptor. It's an engine that they built in-house at SpaceX. Uh, it burns liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Now, the Space Shuttle, for example, and NASA's newest uh, big heavy lift rocket that they're using for the moon called the Space Launch System uses liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Musk says that using methane, uh, super cold, densified methane will allow uh, you know, a greater push, greater punch from these engines. They're more efficient and you get more power out of them. So that's the idea. The first stage would boost this winged rocket we saw this weekend up into space. And then six of these Raptor engines in that spacecraft would then fire on out to the moon or even deep space, as you said, Mars, or even the International Space Station. It could do all of that, so he says. That's a lot of power. Well, so what kind of timeline did Musk give for testing the, the Starship? And what challenges does the company face? And additionally, didn't he say that this could eventually carry upwards of 100 people? I mean, what sorts of, I can't imagine what would be yeah. necessary to support 100 people in space. Yeah, I think everybody is kind of taking that with a big grain of salt. You know, the Starship they showed us this upper stage this week, it doesn't have any life support systems in it. Uh, it's really just tanks and engines so they can test the guidance system, the rocket power, all of that. You know, eventually they would have to add those life support systems, you know, carbon dioxide absorption, waste recycling, all of that kind of uh, technology. And it will not be trivial for even a small crew, but for 100, I don't know anybody who sees that becoming reality. But then again, people didn't think we'd see rockets landing here at the Space Center, and Musk has done that. So, you know, no one is selling short, but 100 people seems extreme. Now, uh, having said that, I have forgotten your first question, so maybe you the can time, run it by me again. The timeline. When is he saying that we yeah, could see this? <laughs> Actually, Absolute, in action. We want absolutely. to see the spaceship up in the air. <laughs> well, you're going to see that in the next one to two months, he says. The spaceship down in Texas, they're going to launch that to an altitude of about 12 miles. They have three Raptor engines on board right now. It's going to go up about 12 miles. It'll move over just a little bit and then descend to a touchdown on a nearby landing pad. He said they hope to have the thing in orbit uh, within six months or so. And when asked when he could put people on board, possibly within a year, he said, although I, I don't think we can hold anybody to a schedule at this early stage, but right. it's going to be soon. He promised this is going to be very fast development. Pretty amazing stuff, Bill. So what was the reaction from NASA to this announcement? You know, I think they watched this with, with great interest because SpaceX is critical to NASA in a number of ways. They already build rockets that carry supplies to the International Space Station. They're in the process of building a crew capsule that will carry astronauts, presumably early next year, to the International Space Station. And so anything SpaceX does in the, in the, in the arena of rocket power and transportation, NASA's interested in. You know, it's interesting, while we're talking, right out my window, as I look out here at, the, at, the, at our bureau at the Cape, NASA's rolling off the first stage, a dummy mock-up of the first stage 
of their big moon rocket, mm. you know, called the Space Launch System, which is also a gigantic rocket. It's also very expensive. If SpaceX can demonstrate a rocket that's, that's demonstrably less expensive but just as safe, then I think that'll be really interesting for NASA down the road to, to see where they want to spend their money. But that's that's a long way down the road, and we're going to have to wait to see how it plays out. Certainly exciting and fun days ahead in the world of space travel, though. Bill Harwood, thank you so much for that.